Knoxville Game Design, July 2018. Unreal Engine Tips with Levi Smith and Dylan Wolf. Welcome everyone to Knoxville Game Design for July 2018. We are game developers in the Knoxville and East Tennessee area. We get together once a month to talk about our game projects and discuss topics in the games industry. Uh, this month we just currently have myself, I'm Levi Smith in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and we also have Dylan Wolf from Lenore City. Hello. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start out uh, with a little bit of news. Share my screen here. So we got uh, the Knoxville Gaming Convention coming up in August uh, next month on August 24th and 25th at the World's Fair Ex Exhibition Hall. Uh, we're going to have a booth there. So uh, this is going to be a part of another <coughs> convention called CreepyCon. So be sure if you're in the area or if you're going to CreepyCon, stop by and say hi and come out and check out some, some of our games at the Knoxville Gaming Convention. Also in August, we got Ludum Dare, was it 42 coming up? And that's going to be August 10th. So they're at the beginning of August. So uh, we found out this is going to be on the same weekend as our regular uh, scheduled podcast uh, get-together meeting. So what we're planning on doing is I'm going to bring out my laptop and maybe a couple microphones and maybe do the podcast at our get-together. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to do it again at Token Game Tavern. I'll double-check and make sure that they're not having like a karaoke night again or something like that. Uh, but this is at 6 p.m. Eastern time, so it will be a little bit earlier. I'm thinking we'll probably, I'll probably just put the start time for our get together at 6 p.m. so we can just get together and talk about what the, the theme is and maybe brainstorm some ideas and things like that. Um, also wanted to mention, I actually missed one of the Knoxville developers. Uh, that did a Ludum Dari entry. Actually, he did two of them. Uh, Dennis Stepp. I believe we met him at the Knox Devs uh, get-together at World's Fair Park. Yeah, I think he, uh, he mentioned he was working with another studio, I guess, out of Knoxville. Um, like he did one of the Ludum Dares. Yeah, I think his first one may have been Ludum, Ludum Dare 39. And for, from what I remember, he like you're saying, he's a part of a team, and I think he just did some UI stuff. But I'm not sure if he did this one by himself or not, uh, Ludum Dare 40. Uh, but he did do a pretty good post-mortem. Looks like he's got a little space shooter right here. Um, I'm not sure if he developed all this himself. It'd be nice if uh, we uh, talked to him maybe sometime. Uh, but he did write a pretty good postmortem for both Ludum Dare 39 and Ludum Dare 40. Um, yeah, I think that he meant 39 right there. <laughs> but uh, I'll definitely add these to the post since he is a Knoxville developer that participated in that event. Um, I was also going to mention, I found these really good tutorials. Um... I've already forgotten. Okay, Minions Art is who created these tutorials. But if you are a Unity developer and you're looking to get some tutorials on how to do shaders, how to do lighting and graphics and things like this, these are some really good tutorials um, by Minions Art. Uh, let's see here. The, how I found this was they put out these little, kind of like little flashcards type things. And just like some quick tips, here's one that they have about how to do liquid in a container and how to make it look like it's actually wobbling and everything. Um, I haven't actually tried this myself, so I'm not sure exactly how great this tutorial is. It looks sort of sparse here. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, can you really do fluid with just these few lines of code? So there may be some more you have to dig into to do that. <clears throat> Another good set of tutorials that I found for Unity is by Catlight Coding. 
And I actually worked through part of this tutorial on how to do water. That's one thing that I've always had problems with is how to do like realistic looking water in Unity. Now I know there are like assets you can get from the asset store, but I always kind of like to, to know how to do this myself. Um, it really does get into the uh, nitty gritty details of how to do the shader. So you got to actually create a Unity shader to do this, which is kind of different than C Sharp and everything else. It's kind of like its own, sort of like C, uh, but it's kind of like its own little language here. But they do a really good job of stepping through each step of this tutorial and how to get this watery type effect. So. Um, I just went through the first part of this. I haven't gotten to the seamless looping or anything yet, but definitely something I'll be using probably in my future games. Um, I also wanted to mention this epic since... So this month's topic is Unreal Engine. Um, so Unreal Engine developed by Epic Games. They actually are giving away Unreal Dev Grants. I think they just finished one round of this. Um, so it's kind of like free money if you're a developer. I mean, these look like pretty polished games. I'm not sure what the requirements are, uh, but if you scroll, I think, to the very bottom or somewhere in here, it actually tells you how to sign up for the next time that they do this. So I don't know. I think they're probably looking for people that are like dedicated studios, <laughs> Probably not hobbyist like me, but um, it's always worth giving it a shot uh, for free money. Uh, so, Dylan, uh, did you have anything uh, you wanted to show off this month or anything? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Well, thanks for showing up. I know you said you're going to have to drop off a little bit early. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just be doing this, and where we have to drop off, that's fine. Okay, so uh, here's Unreal Engine. So the, the topic for this month, it's not going to be introduction to Unreal Engine. Um, I've been doing Unity for five years now. I did one Unreal Engine game uh, about three years ago in 2015. And I'm just going to go over the thing. So I'm kind of relearning Unreal Engine uh, reacquainting myself with it. So it isn't going to be like introduction to game programming in Unreal. This is going to be things that I wish had, I had known before I started developing with Unreal because a lot of things in Unreal are exactly the same as in Unity, or very similar to Unity and also Godot, Godot, however you pronounce it, uh, Godot Engine. So all these things are kind of similar, but there are some things that are different. Uh, which I'm going to uh, go over quickly here. Um, so I created, the, I was a big fan of RC Pro-Am as a kid. Uh, NES game, RC car racing. So I wanted to recreate an RC Pro-Am type game uh, in Unreal Engine. I added a few new things like ramps and things like that. And I got like little checkpoints around the track to make sure that you're actually racing around the track and not just going back and forth across the finish line. Uh, so it's very similar to Unity where you got your little preview window right here and uh, to actually build the game, you go into build or file, build if you want the full uh, game. I basically have the track set up into these segments which I'm hoping to convert these to like prefabs, but I haven't really found out how to do prefabs yet. <laughs> and uh, they do have something called blueprints, which you can attach a script to a game object, and you can also parent objects into other objects. But I really haven't figured out the instantiation yet, so that's something I will look into. But anyway, uh, so the first tip that, or first thing that kind of, uh, stumped me was I had these cars on the track and I actually had code to move the car but they wouldn't move. I was like okay this works in Unity why doesn't it work in Unreal Engine? So very similar to Unity you got this is kind of like your project view the world outliner with all the objects in the scene and this is kind of like your inspector in Unity down here. Um, I think it's just called details. So the one thing you got to make sure of, I wish I had like a look my uh, zoom it 
plugin loaded. But and under transform, there's uh, a set of options. You got your standard location, rotation, and scale, just like Unity. But you also have mobility. And by default, this is set, set to static. So if it's set to static and you try to move your object, it won't move. So you always got to check this movable uh, little button right here if you want to be able to move your object uh, in code. Um, one other thing similar to Unity, whenever you load a game, uh, it will load up a default scene in Unreal. So you always want to make sure you go to open level because uh, sometimes I open my, my project, I'm like, like hey, where'd my, uh, where'd my game go? But you always have to go in and open the, the scene here in open level. Uh, there is a way, which I think I had a later note, to go in and set the default uh, scene that loads. Uh, I think that's under edit project settings. I'm not seeing my note here. Yeah, but it is under settings where you can set up a default scene to load whenever you start the game. And you can also set up the default scene when you build the game. So there's the project settings right there. Um, another thing that can be confusing is I model these cars in Blender using the default uh, unit scale. So these are, I think, one unit by one unit by one unit in size. Um, when you bring these into Unreal, uh, the Unreal coordinate system is like multiplied by 100. So if you want your car to go forward by one unit in typical Blender space, you got to move it by 100 in Unreal Engine. I don't know why that is. There's probably a way in one of the settings, I don't know, to change that to be more like the Unity coordinate system. Um, another thing that can that frustrated me at the beginning is you can add a camera. So there's like a little camera right here. And basically I have this code set up so the camera follows the car around the track. But in Unity you basically, they give you a camera, default camera in your scene. You can delete it, you can add another one, whatever you want to do. Um, but in Unreal, even if you add a camera, it's going to add its own camera that's just like a static camera. I think you can control it with your movement keys. But it's like, no, I don't want to use, I don't want you to spawn your own camera. I want to use my camera. So I'm going to get into that. Let's see here, that camera actor. I think it's under the, I think I created a camera blueprint. Let me double check this. So you can either attach, so here's what a blueprint looks like. It's a lot like Playmaker um, in Unity, which is an add-on, but they kind of like have their own little graphical building tool built in. Um, I think this is the code right here that it's using to follow the car around. So setting the location and ro rotation of the camera based on the car's position. Let me close that. But So you can either have blueprints attached to an object, or you can have a level blueprint, which is kind of like encompasses the whole world. Um, so yeah, here's the... here's I'll, I'll just call this code. I mean, it's graphical coding, basically. Um, so on when your scene begins, when the game begins, you want to use this set view with target blend. And you got to get this reference to your player controller. I don't know why, but there's a, you can also create a reference to your main camera. You do that by selecting the camera over here in this world outliner. And then you can like right click and then you can create a reference to that camera. So you just pull this into the new view target, then that will set the camera you created as the camera that the game world is using. And you can see your preview right there, just like in Unity. In Unreal, uh, basically all these objects are called actors. Everything inherits from actor, whereas in Unity, you'll probably know these as game objects basically the same thing. They have properties like mentioned earlier, transform, location, rotation, and scale. 
Um, so yeah, as I mentioned earlier, okay, so you can set a default map on load by going to edit project settings and it's under maps and modes and there's tons of settings in here. Uh, thankfully, they're in alphabetical order, but yeah, there it is right there. So you got an editor startup map, you can just select that in the drop down or the game default map. So this is what starts up whenever you build the game and an actual player is playing it. So I have the game default map set to title and then I have the editor start map as the level that I'm working on. Um, one thing that threw me for a loop <laughs> quite a bit, let me go back to my like, car blueprint right here, is whenever you have like these connections, like I mentioned earlier, and just drag and drop them. But I was like, how in the world do you delete these connections? So I was like clicking them and pressing delete and pressing right click and nothing seemed to delete these. The, the trick is you hold alt and you click it. If I can click that, then that will delete it. So that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that took me a while to figure out right there is uh, dragging and, or holding alt and clicking to delete. Um, yeah, I forgot where I have it, but if you're doing, it took me a while to figure out how to do a, like an if statement. I don't know if I have one set up right here, but basically if is a branch. So you can like right click here, go to branch, and that will add like a branch node. And you can connect these from like another node, like drag this one up into here, and it gives you a true and false result. So you can kind of determine like the flow and control of your blueprint right there using a branch. Uh, there's other things like uh, you can do <coughs> something similar if you're comparing two integers, you can do a greater than or less than. You can always just like right click and type in a greater than sign. <clears throat> and it's got all the different uh, data types. So if I want one float is greater than another one, then I can do that comparison there. Then drag that result into my uh, branch right here. And that's your condition. So if you got a variable here, like, uh, mm, I don't have a float set up right here, but like if I have a lane, I can drag that right here <clears throat> and get that value. The nice thing about Unreal is I think if I drag this, so this is an int, and I drag it over to a float, it automatically does the conversion from an integer to a float. Then I want to say if the lane is greater than 5, then true do this or false do that. Delete these. Um, another thing that took me a long time to figure out. Um, so I had like a kind of like a track or race manager uh, class. And what I wanted to do is, let's see here, where's my, yeah, car manager right here. This is getting slow. And I wanted to assign these different cars so I can keep track of all the cars in the game. <clears throat> and I wanted to, have, wanted to have other options, like are all cars finished, a Boolean. But these values never did show in the details uh, pane right here. So what you got to do is in the blueprint, uh, you find these variables for like here's all the cars. And there's this eye icon over here. So if you click that, then that will make the variable not viewable in that uh, world view inspector over there. So if you want to be able to assign a value to use in your blueprint for an object, you got to click that eye icon. It's kind of like in uh, Unity where you attach a uh, C sharp script and you want to be able to assign a value to that variable in your script, you basically just make it public. So that's basically the same thing as making your variable public. So it will appear in this default uh, uh, pane right here so you can assign those. Um, the one thing that Unity does really nice is the UI system. Uh, 
I, I realized how much I uh, took the Unity UI system for granted. <clears throat> In Unreal, they have... I think I got it under blueprints right here. Yeah, they got a HUD. So I got my HUD right here. This, All this spaghetti right here is displaying text to the screen, basically the who, what position of every car and who's in the lead and the race results. Um, so you use this format text to draw text to the screen. But it's really confusing about how to get the position on the screen. I really haven't figured that out yet. I just um, plug in various values in here and see, see what works. I think it's using 720p by default, but I'm, I'm not positive about that. Um, okay. And to be able to use this HUD, so you do all your drawing in there. Uh, you got this game mode. So in the game mode, you assign my HUD right there. And there's another place where you can, I think it's either in world settings or the project settings where you actually go in and you assign game mode to this world scene. I don't remember exactly where that is off the top of my head right now. And... An another trick about the my HUD uh, blueprint is you want to use draw text, but if you right click here and you type in draw text, you're going to find two draw text <laughs> functions here, which I didn't realize at the beginning. So I was using the draw text in painting. That's not the one you want to use. You want to use draw text under HUD, otherwise it won't work. And you actually have to have draw text connected to this event called event receive draw HUD. You can't put a draw text on like a begin scene or anything like that or on on tick or anything like that. It has to be, it's kind of like the old Unity on GUI thing. It has to be on this one right here. Um, the one thing that I haven't figured out in Unreal yet is how to do like a list or an array. I've actually looked it up and I haven't been able to find out how, out how to do that in uh, blueprints. There is something called a T array. If you use C++ code, um, I was going to get into that here in a little bit, but basically um, if you plan on doing C++, I think I haven't gotten into it myself, but if you right click, you can add a new C++ class. I recommend if you're planning on using C++, start an empty Unreal project and make sure C++ is working before you start trying to do C++ in an existing blueprint game. Because I just added a C++ class and it completely crashed my project. Um, and Unity, basically it installs like Visual Studio and C Sharp for you and all that. In Unreal Engine, uh, there seems to be a little bit more setup that's required. Uh, when I tried to do a C++ class, it says, hey, you got to have like the latest Windows SDK installed in Visual Studio. By default, Visual Studio does not have, it doesn't even have C++ enabled. So you actually got to go and download the C++ like template or whatever for Visual Studio. So that's stuff you got to do yourself, which is kind of a pain. Uh, so I'm still trying to uh, figure out how to do that. Um, but I've been able to do quite a bit just in blueprints, but I'm starting to get to the point. It's like, okay, I just want an array. I just want to do this simple thing in a couple lines of code and not do all the blueprint stuff. Uh, so hopefully I'll figure out how to do that soon. Um, so getting input for different objects, I can't exactly remember which object, I think it's on my, it's either on car manager or, let me just check car manager right here. Had a couple of these set up. Uh, you can't have different functions in here. Um, I don't think this is it. But basically if you're doing input on an object, you have to have <coughs> input enabled uh, checked. 
Uh, I can't find an example of that right now. But if you have input enabled, then you can go in and add <clears throat> an, an event for each of your buttons, which is kind of nice. So you can just say, uh, right click here. Yeah, my system's getting kind of slow. And do like a space. I'm not sure if it'll come up here or not. Yeah, so you got your keyboard events right here. So if you want to detect a space bar, you just add it right there. You got a pressed event and a released event. So these will trigger whenever the space bar is pressed or released. But like I said earlier, if you're doing this on a game object or an actor, you got to have input enabled. And that's just another action. Uh, input enabled. Um, sometimes you got to click this context sensitive uh, for things to come up. But you only have to call input, or no, it's enable input. I had that backwards. Uh, so you only have to call this once. Uh, and you can put it on your event begin play. Event begin play is sort of like your start in Unity. And event tick is sort of like your update. So you only have to call that once. But if you're doing input, so as I mentioned earlier, there's a level blueprint right here. And if you put your button presses in here, then you don't have to do the input enable. Um, loading levels is pretty simple. Let's see here. I think I have a function right here. But basically, when let me go to my title screen over here. So I'm going to go File, Open Level. Here's my title screen. I'm going to say Don't Save right there. And... I'm going to go to the, so I actually created a menu actor blueprint right here. So, and here's an example of where I was using the space bar. So when the space bar is pressed, then we're going to play a sound. And then we're going to call open level. It's kind of slow right here. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to call open level. And you just give it the level name, which is a string. You can just type it in right there. So I got level name RC Extreme level 01. And that corresponds with the name of the level that you gave it uh, when you saved the level in your game. So it's pretty easy to load a level. Uh, here's a big trick right here. And I spent, uh, I don't know if hours, but spent a quite a bit of time figuring this out. Um, everything in Unreal Engine has to be a wave, like a standard Windows wave file. And it has to be a 16-bit wave. Um, I think there may be some other things that have, have to be set, like the sample rate has to be 44,000. It is very picky about what what is allowed for a audio file. So everything's a wave, 16-bit audio, and as always, uh, Audacity is your friend. So I'll just bring Audacity up. I think we talked about Audacity before, or we probably mentioned it before, but it's a great tool for managing audio files, adding audio effects. I use it for managing the podcast audio um, I don't know what recent files. Yeah, here's the pre-race wave. Okay, so typically I make these in GarageBand, but then you can just go File, then Export Audio, and yeah, that's where it's 16-bit. I think by default it may be 32-bit or something else. So you got to make sure it's 16-bit, and you can change the sample rate right here. I think you click down right there. And here's format right here. So make sure it's a 30, well, that's a 32-bit file. So I think you got to change it to 16-bit PCM right there. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely something I spent a lot of time stumbling across trying to get that to work. Um, yeah, I mentioned the C++. They call it the C++ tool chain. That's what you have to install in Visual Studio. Um as you're working with these scenes, if you add a new object, like you got your different objects over here, like a cube, you can just drag it in right here. You'll get these errors, which are kind of annoying. It says lighting needs to be rebuilt. 
Um, there's an easy way to take care of that. You just say build lighting only. And sometimes this takes a while, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. <laughs> but yeah, you just click build lighting, and that will make that error right there go away. I think you just delete that. Um, yeah, I mentioned the Windows SDK. I'll put a link to the Windows AP. Whenever you build with the C++ file, it will say it needs the Windows 8.1 SDK. I'm not sure why 8.1 not Windows 10 or something else. I know some of the numbering in Windows can be, is kind of weird like that. But I'll put a link to that in the show notes where to get that. Um, if you're doing input, let me close or open up my game again. Level 1. Don't save. Go to fa ed no, Edit Project Settings. And... And go to engine and go to input so if you're doing input there's like these uh meta buttons kind of like unity has it's, it's set up pretty nicely so i have like a bu button called action accelerate and you can assign which buttons so i got this assigned to spacebar w up and gamepad face button bottom it's, it's pretty nice how it defines the buttons on the gamepad i know in uh, Unity, you got to kind of stumble, stumble across and figure out which buttons, because in Unity it's like button one, button two, button three, button four. So it's kind of hard to figure out what those correspond to. But in Unreal, it does give you a pretty nice way, like all these different uh, ways to get what button. And it even has like Oculus and Steam VR and all these different input methods defined right here for you. So I really like that. The one downside for Unreal Engine compared to Unity is that by default, Unity will set up some default uh, input buttons for you. Simple things like jump, submit, cancel, left, right, up, down. I forget, I forget what they all are. But in Unreal, you have to manually define all these yourself. So you've got to build all these from scratch. So if you want a horizontal axis... Like in Unity, it's like uh, input, get access, horizontal. and Unreal, you have to define these yourself and put the negative and positive values. Like for horizontal, I have left and right, A and D, and gamepad left and right. Um, but the nice thing is, is once you have that set up, and I can't exactly remember why I have this set up, but like for a car input, you should be able to just go in to your actions and type horizontal, horizontal, and I think it's this one right here, axis horizontal. So once you add it uh, in your button mappings, it will pop up right here. I think that's it. Uh, in your list of actions for the blueprint. Uh, yeah, I mentioned you don't have to enable input for your level blueprint. I think I briefly mentioned it earlier, but if you want to print just some debug, draw text, they do have a print text, which is kind of nice. And this will only display in your development build. But if you just want to print out a variable, or something like that, you can do it here. I can actually drag this out. So if I want to print the value, the current lap, um, and just get, get the current lap and drag that here. And that will, like I said earlier, the nice thing about Unreal, it will con convert your lap to a string or to a text. I'm still not exactly sure the difference between a text and a string. They're kind of similar, but different somehow. Uh, and you can put that in there. There's also something like string format. I forget the actual name of it, but you can actually build a string with different, yeah, format text. So you can take, it's kind of like the string format in Unity. You can specify different variables to put in this string, and you can just wire these up according to the different variable indices. 
Um, so mo for moving these around, I think I probably mentioned earlier, but uh, just use translate to move objects around. Uh, if you're importing a Blender model in Unity, it's really it makes it really easy. You just take your Blend file and you drop it in, and it works. Um, in Unreal Engine, you actually have to, and I'm not going to bring Blender up here, but you actually have to convert it to FBX yourself, which is a file format for objects. Um, so you got to do, do that yourself. Then you can come into your content, or you can come into Import right here. And I think I put all my stuff in raw. Yeah, models. And you can import your, like I got a ramp FBX and a straight road in the car. All right there. Um, I think in Unity, from what I've heard, it does that conversion behind the scene for you to FBX. So apparently it's still doing the FBX conversion. But in Unreal, you just have to do it yourself. Um, one other nice thing about Unreal is let me double click on my car right here so i had these cars moving around they're translating and everything but once it went off the game world it just kind of kept floating out through space um so to enable physics it's pretty easy I forget where yeah so you got a physics kind of like tab right here i think somewhere right here you just click enable physics and it all just starts working which is pretty nice i'm not sure why I'm not seeing it right here, but somewhere in here you just click enable physics and it'll uh, start working. Um, the nice thing is, is it will actually compute. I think there's a way to come in here and view the bounding boxes. Uh, wireframe. Might be wire. No, that's not it. But there's a way to go in here and see the actual bounding boxes. So the nice thing is, is that it will actually calculate the bounding boxes for you. I know in Unity you actually have to drag or create a, a cube collider over it or use the mesh collider. Then you got to worry about the different types of colliders. Does a cube collider collide with a mesh collider? Sometimes you got to convert it to a convex to get the mesh collider to work, and it's just really confusing. But in Unreal, you just click that Enable Physics, wherever it is. And it'll start working. Oh, oh, maybe it's under details right here. I had the wrong tab. Yeah, there it is right there. So it's under physics, simulate physics. So you just click that and it all starts working. You can also disable gravity and other things like namping and things like that. And the last thing I'll show off is the materials editor. So in material, got a title right there just for like the title text. And it's pretty extensive in all the different things you can do for a material in Unreal Engine. The one thing, the one trick that uh, took me a while to figure out, if you want to assign a color to a material, you can drag this out. But when you look for the data type, it's not there. So what you got to use, so that's blue right there. And it takes it a little while to load. So you can double click that. And it's got your standard like color wheel and change the saturation and vibrance right there and press OK. I want to make it red. Then just drag that over there and it takes a little while to update. But if you want to create a new one of these, what you got to do is you got to right click. Oh, it's slow now. Uh, but you use what's called the constant three vector. Because I was looking for vector and vector three and things like that. It's under constant three vector. So... Eventually, that will update. You can actually see the red color right there. Yeah, there it goes right there. I'm not sure exactly why it's not. Probably because it has a texture on top. so why you can't see the red on the object right there. Um, so I'm going to close that. Go ahead and close that. Don't save. Bring this back. Stop. So, yeah, it looks like Dylan has left. He had to run so that was uh basically um my tips for uh for if you're getting into unreal engine and you're coming from a different programming environment such as uh unity or uh, Gudo or something like that just some quick tips there 
Um, I'm going to mention we do have uh, Knoxville Game Design brochures. It probably comes up backwards on the video. Uh, but yeah, had these made. Been posting these around town. If you want to know, it's basically all the information that we have on the website about the games we've created, the team members, and about the group, uh, and our meetings, and the podcast. So if anybody out there wants one of these brochures, uh, just let me know, send me an email, and I can get you one. Or you can come by the Knoxville Gaming Convention and uh, you can pick one up there, and you may see them around town and other places. Um, may have mentioned it earlier, we're planning on doing a, an event at uh, McKay's next weekend. I think it's open to the public, but it's like a retro game night about uh, at McKay's in Knoxville. So if you're interested in that... Uh, there should be information online uh, for that. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up for July 2018. I appreciate Dylan getting on this month. Uh, also want to reiterate that next month we won't be getting together at the usual 2 p.m. on Sunday. We're going to do the kickoff probably at Token Game Tavern. And we'll try to do the, a, a short podcast or a short show from there. So anyway, remember to uh, check out Dylan Wolf. He's Dylan Wolf uh, on Twitter, and his site is DylanWolf.com. You can check out my stuff. I'm GA Tech Grad on Twitter, and I'm also LeviDSmith.com. You can find my website there with all my projects and everything. And always check out the Knoxville Game Design website, KnoxGameDesign.org. Uh, get the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. And you can follow the Twitter account for the latest updates. Uh, that's Knox Game Design as well. So anyway, appreciate everyone joining us. And uh, yeah, look forward to doing a Ludum Dare kickoff next month. So. See everybody next month.